I don't have the exact quote, but Marx more or less said, the test of truth is human survival, is our own existence. If we do something for long enough that doesn't correspond to truth, we cease to exist. Now, that may not be true in the short run, but in the long run, that's true. In the long run, the more humanity as a whole uses the scientific method, the more of us there are and the better our lives are. When, when we lose that, then things start to go wrong. I think that's one point that Ayn Rand and Karl Marx would actually agree on. <laughs> All right. I'll leave that to you. I mean, I think that you, something that you said there, which is that in the short run, it's hard to tell, especially when we live in a really technologically sufficient environment. We have lots of food. Like the other day we were talking about uh, scarcity and I looked up how much food is produced in the world per person. And we there's enough food to feed every single person on earth with 3,000 calories a day. And so the the technological juggernaut that has ensured our survival, I think lends people to the mindset, leads people to the mindset that everything's kind of okay and that the authorities have it figured out because everything works. And we're constantly running up against this question of, well, what does it matter if we're wrong about something like the Big Bang? Like the, the idea of the Big Bang as being a science or the birth of the universe as being a scientific endeavor rather than a mythological one is in and of itself kind of a modern construct. And then, so you have this modern construct of the birth of the universe. And then on top of that, you have the fact that, well, it's scientific, but it doesn't really have a huge bearing on people's existence. It doesn't seem directly related to whether or not you're going to starve tomorrow. And so this is kind of a big question, but why does it matter if the universe had a beginning or it didn't have a beginning? And well, but this is this disconnect you're talking about is a product of the present historical moment. Mm. If we turn the clock back to the end of the 19th century, which was a period of extremely rapid technological progress, I mean. If you imagine somebody uh, being born in 1870, and living a normal life, and dying at the end of World War II in 1945, 75 years later, think of how different the world seems to this individual from his earliest memories. Earliest memories would be, you know, horse-drawn carriages, uh, gas lighting or kerosene, you know, or even whale oil. Um, of course, there was, you know, machines in the factories, but many aspects of human life had changed little since, you know, centuries ago. He dies in a world where, you know, most people in the United States, let's say he was an American, have automobiles. Uh, horse-drawn carriages obviously no longer exist. Uh, we have telephones, radio, beginnings of television, uh, you know, uh, passenger airplanes, and most dramatically, obviously, if he witnessed the atomic uh, bombings that ended the, the war, uh, the unleash of atomic energy. So an enormous rapid progress, and a very enormous increase in the standard of living as measured by a very rapid decline in the death rate, big extension in life expectancy. So if you go back to that time, people, ordinary people, were taught by the mass media, by everything, that technological advance was key to the advance of, of human beings, key to their standards of living. 
In the 19th century, in many parts of this country, in England, one of the popular forms of entertainment was scientific lectures. You know, I mean, imagine that compared with today's entertainment. People would go to these lectures and leading scientists, uh, going back to the beginning of the 19th century in England, this started, would explain cutting-edge concepts in ways that they hoped, you know, everybody could understand. And they expected that the basics, not ma- the mathematics of it, the basics could be understood. And it was necessary that the basics could be understood because the capitalists who ran society then as now knew that they needed skilled workers who could understand electromagnetism because they had to build and maintain the completely new electrical technology that was starting to run society and that by you know, the middle of the 20th century was completely dominating society. So the idea back then that scientific knowledge led to technolo- technological progress. And although I won't say this was explicit, implicit, the proof of the validity of scientific knowledge was the development of technology that was based on. Again, people weren't talking about epistemology, but I don't think there's been a period in the history of humanity where many people talked about how do we know what we know. But it was the cycle was known. The development of science leads to technology. The development of technology leads to a higher standard of living. And the development of technology, scientists explain, gives us new instruments new ways of looking at the universe. So technology leads back to new scientific discoveries. So uh, the tech, to give a simple example, improvements in vacuum technology, which I know from chasing leaks is really tough, uh, but getting better vacuum allowed the development of the Crookes tube in which there was enough vacuum, there was low enough pressure in a sealed glass tube that electrons could move through that tube. So that led to the discovery of x-rays, which x-rays were applied medically within weeks of the scientific discovery of this. Uh, The uh, the, uh, discovery of the electron something a thousand times less mass, a two thousand less times less mass than the atom, uh, the discovery of radioactivity, and pretty soon the dis- you know, the discovery of the existence of nuclear energy. So all of these things were happening very fast. So the question that you raise in today's society, no, it really wasn't a question. It was taken for granted that Science led to technology. Technology led to better standards of living. What you have today is after the post-war boom, which was, again, a period of rapid technological development, not as rapid as this earlier period, but almost as rapid, very rapid increase in the standard of living. I mean, the rate of decline in the death rate peaked at the end of the 1960s. So the 60s really were the good old days. 